Hey guys, we're back here at Bear Creek Arsenal today and today we're going to go just a little bit deeper into our new 22 long rifle upper assembly. So this upper is chambered in 22 long rifle. Um, it will not work with a regular 22 long or a 22 short, nor will it work for the 22 Magnum. All right, this is standalone 22 long rifle. So just make sure you're buying your ammo accordingly. Uh, your ammo selection for the 22s really is wide open. You can buy the, the bulk 500 round packs or you can buy the, the more expensive like CCI uh, stingers or something like that if that's your choice. It'll run a variety of the ammos from the, the cheapest to the, the best. Uh, just understand that if you do use subsonic ammo, you may experience some issues because historically semi-automatics uh, in 22 they just don't like the subsonic ammos in the 22 LR so you know you may want to stay with the supersonic on that um, practical uses for this outside of just having fun putting lead into targets uh, you can use it for small game you know uh, groundhogs squirrels uh, fox maybe you know, stuff like that, the super small stuff, maybe even rabbits if you, you know, are inclined to hunt that. Uh, I wouldn't try to go out and hunt any kind of big game with this, just, you know, from the ballistic standpoint of it, 22 LR is just not a great caliber for anything much bigger than, you know, like a groundhog, maybe even a fox. And we're getting a bunch of questions. What buffer do I need in my lower? Well, for this system, you don't need a buffer in your lower. The bolt does not come back far enough to even actuate your buffer, so it's not necessary. If you have one in your current lower that you're just gonna take off of another rifle, say a 5.56, and put it on this upper, leave it in there, that's fine. It's not gonna hurt anything to be in there, but you don't need to go get some specialized, dedicated buffer for this upper. Because like I said, if you'll notice, the bolt's in there flush. When I pull the charging handle back, that's as far back as it's going to move. So the buffer and the spring inside your lower is actually kind of pointless. And when I take this apart, you'll understand why. This is a direct blowback system, so there is no gas tube, there is no gas block. Uh, again, it's a bufferless system, so you don't need a dedicated buffer or spring inside your lower. Uh, everything is pretty much contained to this upper assembly uh, to be a standalone upper. But I will go ahead and break it down, semi, break it down uh, to a good cleaning level so that you can understand what all you're looking at and what all you're going to be working with here. So to do that, it's the same T25 Torx bit that you use on any of your other side charging handles. It's the same handle, same screw. Just go ahead and take that out. Charging handle comes off. We take the threaded receiver plug out. And the BCG comes out. Now, as you can see, this looks very different than what you may be used to seeing in some of those uh, conversion things like the uh, CMMG conversion kit, you know, it, it looks more like a bolt carrier group that you're used to seeing. It's just got a little adapter on the front of it to be able to get the 22 long rifle into the chamber. Um, but this, this spring here is actually your buffer spring or recoil spring, however you want to deem it necessary to call it. But the bolt moves like this. It gets caught on the threaded receiver plug that we have. It hooks on here, so that's why this piece doesn't move very far out of the upper. And that's all the room it needs to cycle those little bitty 22 long rifle cases. So the firing pin is in here the same manner as the firing pin is in any other bolt carrier group. You've got your firing pin, retainer pin here. And then the firing pin just dumps out the back. It is spring loaded. So you may not be used to seeing a spring on your firing pin, but that's just a unique thing to the 22. Other than that, that's really as far down as you need to take it to be able to clean it. 
uh, all the parts that are here. I would not try to disassemble this guide rod and spring set up here. Um, there's just really no need for it. You can soak all this down in your favorite gun cleaner, uh, take an air hose to it, blow out you know, the little spots, take your toothbrush to it, clean the bolt phase, clean all the carbon off the main surface areas, and then just give it a nice light coat of oil before you put it back in your upper and you should be good to go. There's really not much to this in the way of uh, any extreme dynamics, so don't think just because it looks much harder that it is much harder, because it's really not. And once you get everything wiped down to your satisfaction, again, put you a nice light coat of oil on the main carrier here. All right, you don't need to oil down the spring. You don't need to oil down this back part. Uh, you can put just a, a little light coat on your firing pin if you feel the need. And then you just simply reinstall everything. One thing I will say is you notice there is a little notch on this firing pin. All right, so you'll need to make sure that notch is lined up to your firing pin retainer hole so that you can get the retainer pin back in there. On this bolt carrier group for the 22LR, you do have your extractor built into the bolt. It does look different than your typical extractor that you may be used to seeing, but it works in the same fashion. It is spring loaded under there. It moves, it grabs the round, it pulls the round out of the chamber and extracts it just like it does any other AR. But one thing you will notice is the ejector is actually built onto the barrel extension in the 22LR. So you don't have that on your bolt like you do any other uh, standard mil spec bolt carrier group. So just be aware that when you do look at this for the first time, if this is the first time you've ever seen one, that it is gonna look just a little bit different. But again, no real worry there. Just simply clean it the same way you would any other upper. Use your rags, use your nylon toothbrushes, whatever gun cleaner you wanna use, and just give it a good wipe down. Uh, with the 22 LRs, they do get a little bit more dirty. Just rim fire in general can do that. So. You, you know, me personally, I clean mine every two, 300 rounds, just give it a simple wipe down and I'll do a thorough detailed cleaning of it, you know, a, a deep cleaning of it, you know, every 750 rounds to a thousand rounds. Uh, but that's again, subject to interpretation based on your personal preferences. Uh, if you want to do it every magazine, do it every magazine. I mean, it's up to you how you take care of your firearm. Uh, and then putting it back together, guys, it's really simple spring down into the channel you know where the charging handle normally would go just set it in there and that's it you know it really because it is a blowback system and it is a uh, a flat bolt face there there's really not much to go into battery so you don't have to worry about that making sure you're locking lugs and all that stuff it's just a non-existent feature on these things it just Simply goes in, bolt face closes to the breech face, everything locks up good and tight. All right, so I'm gonna take this hand guard off just to show everybody what it does look like under here. And as you can see, there, there's no gas block, there's no gas tube. Uh, the profile of the barrel is just, you know, we kept the same look as a, like a 5.56 barrel with a carbine link gas tube on it, but uh, that's why there is a little bit of a shoulder here. But other than that, it, it, since it is a direct blowback system, there's no need for a gas tube or a gas block, so you don't have to worry about that and compatibility issues or anything like that. Same barrel nut that's on any of the rest of our ARs. Uh, same hand guard, you know, same everything. Same flash hider, it's still a half to 28 thread pitch on here so you can put any standard 22 caliber uh, muzzle device on here that you want to if you don't like the look of the A2 style. Outside of that guys that's pretty much it. Uh, it looks the same, it feels the same as your other AR-15 calibers so again if you do have a 5.56 at home but understand that ammunition prices these days are ridiculous 
if you can get a hold to one of these 22 LR uppers uh, like I said you take your 556 five, upper off of your lower put this on there and you can train at a fraction of the cost you know and still be able to get the effect of firing now the recoil on this is very very low I mean almost non-existent so from that standpoint if you're needing to train to get used to the recoil and you're needing to train to get used to the noise uh, probably not going to work out well for you but just from a pure muscle memory standpoint of holding the AR going through loading the AR cycling the AR uh, coming up from a low ready to a shoulder doing quick up drills things like that then getting the 22 LR is going to be the way to go like I said you can train and you can practice for all of the mechanical functions of shooting uh, at a fraction of the price. One other great thing about these 22 LR uppers is they do take CMMG magazines, but from us here at Bear Creek, all of our 22 LR upper assemblies are going to come with one magazine. Outside of that, guys, like I said, we have other videos on our YouTube page. Go ahead and give us a, a, a subscribe and a like. That way you get the latest and greatest when we do post something new. Uh, outside of that, just want to tell everybody to stay safe, keep slinging lead.